My name is Carl Marshall. I work at Quantium and I'm the Deputy Convener of the General Insurance Practice Committee, also known as GIPC, supporting our new convener, Jeremy Wade, across all aspects of his role. I also have a particular personal focus on data analytics. My name is Kitty Ho. I work at Munich Re and my GIPC focus areas are member liaison and communications, as well as professional standards. And we are pleased to be giving you an update of the general insurance industry on behalf of the GIPC. So Carl, what have been the key developments in the general insurance industry in 2018? I have to start any update on recent industry developments of the Royal Commission into misconduct in the banking, superannuation and financial services industry. The Royal Commission has easily been the most talked about event in recent months. Following six months covering six rounds of public hearings, the most recent of which covered aspects of both life and general insurance, Commissioner Hain has issued his interim report with a final report anticipated by early February 2019. The Royal Commission is likely to have far-reaching consequences for our industry. Carl, there are other macro-level trends in the general insurance industry. Can you give us an update on those? Yes, Kitty. I have to say that there is continued evolution of InsureTech. InsureTech has been one of the big new buzzwords in our industry in recent years. Well over a thousand different InsureTech businesses have emerged to date. Although it is inevitable that many InsureTechs will fail, some will succeed. Incumbent insurers are starting to develop strategies designed to take advantage of the potential opportunities from InsureTech. Insurers now appreciate the op potential opportunity to improve business outcomes and customer engagement with InsureTech through partnering, investment or acquisition. Closer to home, a number of Australia-based InsureTech propositions have emerged, including a couple that have been set up by general insurance actuaries. You said earlier that data analytics is one of your main focuses. So what has been the impact there on GI actuaries? Whilst the Data Analytics Working Group, or DOG, is tasked with ensuring that the potential for actuaries in this rapidly growing space is exploited fully, the GIPC also has a data analytics as a key focus. General insurance actuaries have been at the forefront of this burgeoning area, and that will likely continue over the next few years. Many of our actuaries have shifted their focus away from the more traditional actuaries and are increasingly working with other analytics and related professionals to help insurers and other industries take advantage of the vast array of emerging analytics techniques and technologies. Speaking of technologies, how do you think advancements like automation, connected cars and homes and autonomous vehicles will change the industry? There's been a lot of talk about these emerging trends including the potential for our industry to change dramatically as automation and technology evolves. Although it is likely to be many years before we have a clear understanding of how dramatic the changes will be, many insurers are already redesigning their businesses and redeveloping their strategies to help position themselves for a more ambiguous future. GI actuaries are well placed to help insurers navigate through the ambiguities, but we ourselves will need to adapt to the change. I can't agree more that GI actuaries and the companies that they work for must be agile in adapting changes. Against the backdrop of the Royal Commission and these emerging macro-level developments, the insurers must engage their customers in a stronger, customer-centric manner. Actuaries will continue to play a key role in ensuring that insurers meet customer and community expectations as they take advantage of the emerging opportunities in technology and data and analytics. Definitely. Kitty, can you please touch on some of the other key industry developments of the last 12 months? Particularly those developments that have provided key context for GIPC focus? Yes, of course. In addition to the key topics already discussed, the GIPC has been working hard on various topics which arose throughout 2018. For the reporting actuaries, there were changes which they had to navigate through. Firstly, the new accounting standard IFRS 17 on insurance contracts was issued in May 2018 and it represents a significant change for insurers in all jurisdictions. Insurers are all preparing for its implementation and will need to be ready well in advance of 2021 when it becomes mandatory. Secondly, APRA commenced a review of the appointed actuary role in June 2016. Two years later, in June 18, APRA released Prudential Standards CPS 320 and GPS 340. A key component of APRA's changes is the need for all insurers to agree on an actuarial advice framework with their appointed actuaries. In doing so, APRA hopes that the AA role will shift to a more strategic focus with reduced compliance obligations and increasing flexibility in the provision of actuarial advice. This is a great development for actuaries to influence. And thirdly, the current PS 300 which was last updated in 2013, has been through a review and a revised version will be released soon. 
What about the hot topic of climate change? The Institute's Climate Change Working Group is a cross-practice working group that's been working on the development of a climate change index, which was officially launched at this year's GI seminar. The GIPC has been involved in the technical details of the work. This should be a key area where actuaries can be at the forefront of influence in a critical area, as the latest IPCC report says. GIPC also has a subcommittee working on cyber risk. What have been the key developments in the cyber insurance industry, Kitty? Cyber insurance continues to develop as a product, as our understanding of this particular risk evolves. GI actuaries have helped underwriters to develop and price this new product in the context of the huge level of uncertainty in relation to the risk itself. This is an expanding area where actuaries can apply their know-how in product design and risk measurement. Several models are now available. GI actuaries are also good at applying their know-how to public policies and government schemes. How was the Institute involved with the National Redress Scheme for Institutional Child Sexual Abuse? On 1st of July 2018, the National Redress Scheme commenced and offers to eligible survivors of institutional child sexual abuse, redress payments and access to counselling and psychological services. The Institute provided feedback via the GIPC on the details of the scheme proposals. There have been a number of developments in the injury scheme space. Can you give us a high level summary of the key changes? Of course. As well as the ongoing evolution of NDIS, the New South Wales CTP scheme saw significant reforms in late 2017 as the New South Wales Government looks to bring scheme costs under control and reduce premium. In the ACT, the Citizens' Jewelry has chosen a new CTP model for the state and this is expected to commence on 1st of July 2019. In mid-19, the South Australian CTP scheme will complete its transition period and move to a fully competitive, privately underwritten model. As we progress towards the end of 2018 into 2019, we're expecting the key trends that we have discussed so far in this update to continue and to substantially inform the GIPC agenda over the next 12 months. Yes, naturally, a key area of focus for the GIPC next year will be to consider the Royal Commissioner's final report and ensure that general insurance actuaries play a key role in helping the industry improve on how it works to fulfil its important role in the community and in the support of the economy. Another major focus of GIPC will be the further development of the Institute's education system. A member of the GIPC chairs the GI education faculty and indeed provides final sign-off on the GI exams. As the nature of the work actuaries do changes, it is important to ensure that the education and course materials and tuition keep pace with the needs of employers and society and make sure that the key actual skills are maintained and enhanced as the profession faces challenges from new analytics methods and technologies. Volunteers who wish to help and get involved in education are always gratefully received, particularly those recent fellows with more spare time. If you are interested in accessing more CPD resources, please check out the Institute's website where you will find articles, green papers, submissions, podcasts and microsites of Institute events. All the CPD materials you've mentioned, Kitty, are the hard work of Institute's volunteers. That's right, Carl. The Institute and the GIPC are always look keen to have more volunteers, particularly younger volunteers, who are willing and able to get involved in GI-related activities. There are many benefits to being involved. Personally, I find that being engaged with the Institute allows me to influence the direction of the profession and bring specialist knowledge I have from my work life to enhance the experiences of others in the profession. Not only that, I can learn from others in the industry and it really helps my career with all the networking and profile building opportunities. Absolutely. I mentioned before that more volunteers are needed in the education space. What are the other ways our members can get involved, Kitty? Well, other than education, members are very welcome to write an article or paper for publication, join a working group or help to run an institute event. We'd like to close our update by thanking all GIPC members for their support over the last year. A particular thank you must be given to Tim Clark. Tim recently stepped down as GIPC convener, having performed the role for five years. The Actuaries Institute and his fellow GIPC members greatly appreciate the leadership that he has brought to the committee. And we look forward to having his insightful input and challenge 
as he will remain a member of the GIPC for the foreseeable future. Thank you for joining us.